here with Mike on the Wednesday videos and other writing tips. Hi folks. Today we're going to talk about cliches and why we should have some new cliches. Uh, I know that many of you are comic book fans. I myself am a comic book fan. Uh, and uh, how many times have you read in a comic, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, or move it people, or we have to talk. Now the latter, we have to talk, has spread like a pox through all popular fiction. I probably see it three times a week on TV. If you ever find yourself writing these, stop. Step back from the keyboard and think of a new way to say it. Uh, especially ones that we've heard a thousand times. That one about Kansas, that just drives me nuts. We all know where it came from, the Wizard of Oz. Let's leave it with the Wizard of Oz. Well, how do you come up with a fresh way of saying it? You can look inside yourself uh, and uh, try to come up with a phrase that you think will resonate. Of course, it has to make sense. And good language is important. Now, we've spoken before about the importance of the narrative voice uh, and how to keep it fresh. And there are many tricks to keeping it fresh, but one of the ways you keep it fresh is by finding new ways to express sentiments that have been expressed a thousand times before. Now, it's said that there are only seven basic plots in fiction. So we start with that. How do you differentiate your plot from others? Well, you make it unique. <coughs> And how do you make it unique? Well, we're all unique human beings and we necessarily bring our life experience to whatever it is that we write. <coughs> Excuse me. I swallowed a frog last night. I hope to get rid of him today. Uh, whenever I, I've, I've mentioned before the importance of carrying a tablet and a pen with you at all times and keeping your ears open especially for colloquialisms, uh, uh, unique ways of speaking that they're a part of a, a, of a country or a culture. I come from Wisconsin, and uh, one of the popular exclamations there, uh, uh, comparable to good grief or holy cow, is oofda. Now, anybody who's read Badger knows that I use oofda a lot, but I've never seen it in any other fiction, and I often have fans today repeating that back to me. So that's a colloquialism that comes from uh, their Scandinavian background. Apparently, it's a very popular phrase in Scandinavia. Uh, now, uh, a teacher has compiled a list of metaphors and similes that were put together by high school students studying creative writing. And um, I think some of these are worth repeating because while they jar you out of the narrative because they're so funny, they also stick with you because they're so fresh. Her eyes were like two brown circles with big black dots in the center. He was as tall as a six foot three inch tree. From the attic came an unearthly howl. The whole scene had an eerie, surreal quality, like when you're on vacation in another city and Jeopardy comes on at 7 p.m. instead of 7.30. Long separated by cruel fate, the star-crossed lovers raced across the grassy field toward each other like two freight trains, one having left Cleveland at 6.36 p.m. traveling at 55 miles per hour, the other from Topeka at 4.19 at a speed of 35 miles per hour. Now you might think that that's a, a mathematics question. It's not. It's a metaphor. Uh, listen to your own voice. Uh, I sometimes, at the dog park, I see dogs that look to me like a bottle brush. You know what a bottle brush looks like. It looks like, poof, uh, the hairs of the brush are going off in all directions. So I've used that. I said the dog looked like a bottle brush. So trust your own instincts when it comes to something like that. Uh, and remember those thoughts that you have. And one good way to remember is to write them down. Now, if you don't have a pad and a pen with you, say them out loud. Speaking them out loud fixes them in the brain long enough for you to get to a pen and a pad. Uh, or you can, you can use your notes on your smartphone. Okay, no, all right, go ahead. 
So. That kills the spontaneity. You know, I, when I think of making notes on my phone, it just drives me crazy. Why would I do that? It's so much simpler to write them down in a tablet because I always have a pen and a tablet. Uh, and the act of writing them down by hand also fixes them in your memory much better than typing them into a, an electronic notepad. And we all know this because you'll type something into your notepad and 15 minutes later, you'll forget completely what it was. Uh, so eyes, ears open, especially for colloquialisms. And if you hear somebody else using a unique phrase that you've never heard before, it's okay to write that down and use it. The point is to appear fresh in your fiction and you appear fresh in your fiction by using language that's fun, direct, and original. Does Freddie have anything to say about this? Freddie, um, do you have anything to Freddy say? Freddie has written Freddy? a few cliches, which I would like to read. Okay. <clears throat> the little boat gently drifted across the pond exactly the way a bowling, <clears throat> a bowling ball wouldn't. Her hair glistened in the rain like a nose hair after a sneeze. The hailstones leaped from the pavement, just like maggots when you fry them in hot grease. You know, <laughs> that's not bad. I might use that myself. <laughs> Is that one you made up? No. Oh, it's one they, you heard? Oh, okay. So notes, typed written notes. All right, folks, thanks for taking a few minutes to listen. And our goal, our objective is to have a video each Wednesday, probably in the morning, seems to be when we both have our brains together still. And I haven't run out the door and Mike hasn't gone off and done things like writing on his computer. Any upcoming projects that are in the works that are exciting to know about? You know, uh, I've been showing art from Bronze Star since last winter, but uh, I've stopped showing that uh, because uh, my showrunner says that we shouldn't start showing that art around uh, until we're ready to launch, which we will be next month. Uh, Bronze Star is a supernatural thriller drawn by Pat Broderick. It's the greatest work of his life. Everybody who has seen his art has had their mind blown, but I would mention two projects I'm working on now uh, that will come out sometime in the future. I'm adapting a screenplay, a science fiction screenplay called Jan Croon. Uh, and I recently wrote a 62 page Cobalt Blue graphic novel. And the publisher wants Pat Broderick to illustrate that as well. Uh, and if you're familiar with Cobalt Blue, you know that it was created by Mike Gustavich. And, and uh, Mike is a brilliant artist, a futurist, whose scenes of, of uh, futuristic cities uh, sizzle in the mind, that Pat can do that as well. So I'm looking forward to those. Okay. All right. Well, stay tuned. And again, our goal is to give you some educational and helpful writing tips each week. And Freddie is, well, Mike's sidekick. And this is Mac here. This is our old girl, Mac. Mac, do you want to look at mommy? Okay. All right. Well, that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.